Good morning. A very warm welcome to our service this morning on Trinity Sunday. It's wonderful to welcome those of you watching on YouTube and those of you listening on Red Kite Radio. Uh, it is really good to be able to worship God together this morning. Today we will be thinking about the mystery of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. The model of harmonious relationship that God gives us within God's self, that reaches out to all of us, inviting us to join in with the wonderful dance of God's love. So we begin. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us take a moment of quiet to realize God's presence with us. As, God pe as God's people, we are gathered. Let us worship him together. Let us pray. Lord God, we set this time apart for you. By the presence of your spirit, fill our worship, hear our prayers, speak to us and change us. Form us into the likeness of Jesus Christ, so that our lives may glorify you. Amen. So as always at the beginning of our service, we take the opportunity to lay before God those things that we carry around as those burdens, the mistakes that we've made, the things that we've done that we wish we hadn't. Saint Paul says, be imitators of God, love as Christ loved. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit, put away all anger and bitterness, all slander and malice. So let's take a moment of quiet to confess our sins to God who forgives us in Christ. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you of your sins heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our first hymn today reminds us of the gift of God's grace and the transforming power this can have in our lives. We are singing Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas great. Oh, my God. 
Our Bible reading today speaks of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. There are a few verses from Paul's famous letter to the Romans, chapter 8, beginning at verse 15. You did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. When Christopher Columbus, who was a very devout Catholic, was on his third voyage to America, he saw what seemed to be three islands rising up out of the sea. But as he came nearer, he realized that what he thought were three islands were really three mountain peaks joined together at their bases by a low strip of land. There was only one island, not three. So he gave it the Spanish name for Trinity. He called it Trinidad because he said this is what the Trinity means. While we were still far off, we can see only three persons. But when we draw nearer and see what God as he really is, then we find that the three persons are really one God. The national coat of arms of Trinidad still has the three peaks on its shield. Every Sunday, we stand up to declare our faith in the Trinity. We affirm belief in God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. However, I think that many would be hard pressed to explain what the Trinity actually means. How can God be three persons and yet one? Jesus' contemporaries, when he said, I and my Father are one, considered this was blasphemy. Whatever the signs of Jesus' divinity, they just couldn't believe it. Yet, from early days, Christians have believed that the doctrine of the Trinity is the only way to understand the teaching in the Gospels and the Epistles. I want you to imagine now a conversation between friends, a Christian and the friend who is bewildered by the idea of the Trinity. I'm going to try to help her understand why we believe it. Hello. Hello. (laughs) You Christians seem to believe in three gods, father, mother, and son. (laughs) What makes you say that? Well, everyone knows that. You call it the Trinity. Yes, you're right. We do believe in the Trinity. But it's not what you just said. Well, can you explain what you do mean? Well, firstly, the Trinity is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. (coughs) Secondly, I'd like you to hear this verse from the Bible. God told Moses in the Torah, that's the Jewish Bible, to tell God's people, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. 
There's no question that the Bible teaches that there is one God and the commandments say you should have no other gods but me. I didn't know that was in the Bible. I thought that was in the Quran. Exactly. But which came first? Hmm. I suppose you've got a point there. But that's what the Jews believed. But what about Christians? Did Jesus say there was only one God? He certainly did. He told someone who really knew the Torah, well, the Lord our God is one. Love him with all your heart, mind and strength. Well, so why do Christians say there are three gods? Well, let me try to explain a bit. Do you agree that God is beyond our comprehension and far greater than anything we can really imagine? If there is a God, that's true. So, just imagine in your mind, God at the top of a picture with a cloud around him because he's far away, unapproachable and mysterious. Okay. Now at the bottom, there is a person on earth with a line in between separating them. Notice the huge gap. God in heaven, people on earth. God can see us, but we cannot see him. God belongs to the invisible world and we belong to the visible. Does that make sense? Yes, yeah, sure. So far, so good. Carry on. If God wants to talk to human beings, how can he do it? Well, I suppose he sends people like prophets to speak for him. Right. Now let's take one of them, Moses. Oh, I know about Moses. God spoke to him in the desert and there was some fire. <laughs> yes. Now isn't that amazing that God speaks to human beings in a language that we can understand, at a volume our ears can handle? I agree, but, but what has that to do with the Trinity? Well, the story of Moses teaches us about God and his nature. Because God loves us, he communicates with us. There's a verse in the New Testament which says, in these last days, God has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom he made the universe. The son is the exact representation of God's being. God spoke through many different ways, but he used human means to communicate. How, how does he do that? God is invisible. And in order for us to understand him, he does use human language. This shows his humility and his love. He is called the Word. He is the physical manifestation of God who is the great mind, the intelligent power. You've given me quite a lot to think about there. Could I just give you one other example? Let's think about the sun, which is, I'm told, 93 million miles away from us. We can't ever get to the sun. It's too far, and if we could, we'd burn up. How does the sun come to us? By its light, I think. Well, exactly. That's how God came to us, through his light. Jesus said, while I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. Now well, that's interesting. So Jesus is the light that came down from heaven. You've got it. The light that is here with us came from the ball of fire that is far from us, yet they're one. You could say, figuratively speaking, that the fire is the father of the light. Even though the light travels millions of miles, <coughs> they are not separated. In the same way, God the Father and Jesus the Son 
are inseparable. Jesus came down to us because we couldn't possibly get to him ourselves. He loves us and wants us to live in light, not darkness. That's really good. I understand that. But, but what about the Holy Spirit? No, I was just going to get to that. Let me ask, what does the light bring with it? What do we experience other than being able to see what's around us? Do you mean the heat? Is the Holy Spirit the heat? Certainly. You could call it the energy, the power. You really seem to have got it. Well, I think I have, but for some reason it still does not make sense to me. I seem to be a bit stuck. Well, I think I know why you're stuck, and it's not because you lack intelligence. No matter how smart people are, <clears throat> they'll never fully understand without one crucial element. The Christian leader Paul put it like this, the person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God because they're foolishness to him. They have to be spiritually deserved. God must reveal his truth to us. When Jesus asked Peter, the disciple, who he thought he was, Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon Peter. This was not revealed to you by a human being, but by my Father who is in heaven. Just as Peter understood through God's revelation, you can too, if you want God to reveal this to you. I think I do, but I have to think more about it. That's good. I wonder whether you've ever had any kind of conversation a bit like that. The, the Trinity demonstrates that God is love. He's not a lonely God who needs the creation as an object for his love. God in his three-in-oneness as three distinguishable persons and functions are in perfect unity and love with each other. Although the word Trinity never occurs in the Bible, the idea is there. The Father speaks to Jesus, who speaks to the Spirit, who will, and I quote, guide you into all the truth. Some people have said that the Trinity is an impractical doctrine of relative unimportance. I hope that you might agree that it's actually very relevant and can be very practical as a truth to live with today. God bless you all. Let us pray. God of the universe, trinity of love, three persons in one God, we praise you for your glory and your grace, and we bring to you our prayers for the world. When I say, God, the Holy Trinity, will you respond, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for the whole human family, for our Queen and government and fellow citizens. Help us not to be cynical about politics and politicians. And may our leaders do all they can to make our nation a place of fairness and peace, because you call us to act justly, to love mercy and to walk humbly with you, our God. We remember the leaders of all the other nations, especially in the troubled areas of our world. The conflicts between Israel and Gaza, we think of Myanmar, Western China, and we pray that the peoples of the world may learn to understand and respect each other 
and work together to overcome injustice, poverty and conflict. God, the Holy Trinity, hear our prayer. Jesus, Saviour of the world, we pray for the people you have redeemed. We pray for your church that we may be alive to God's call, quick to obey his will, and always ready to act in his loving service for the good of all people. We pray for national Christian leaders and those who serve among us in our diocese, benefice and parish. Help us to be supportive of one another in worship, prayer and deepening faith. God the Holy Trinity, yeah. hear our yeah. prayer. Spirit of the living God, we remember all those who are suffering through illness, increasing frailty, painful treatment or bereavement. Bring healing through the care they receive from doctors, nurses, relatives and friends. And bless all your people with the gifts of faith, hope and love. In a moment of quiet, we remember those known to us who need our prayers, especially at this time. God, the Holy Trinity, yeah. hear our prayer. And we join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We're now going to sing that great Trinity hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy.
Let's pray for God's blessing on us. The Lord God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, the holy and undivided Trinity, guard you, save you and bring you to that heavenly city where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>